Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we will discuss the steps on how to create frequency distribution table. Let's start! Let us define first what is frequency distribution table. Frequency distribution table is the grouping of the numerical observations into intervals or classes together with the count of the number of observations that fall in each interval or class. It is mostly used for summarizing categorical values because there are some instances that variables tend to have many distinct values. When do we need to construct frequency distribution table or FTT? We construct frequency distribution table if there are at least 30 data observations or row scores. For example, given 50 multiple choice items in their final test in mathematics, the scores of the students are the following. As you can see, we have 30 scores consisting of 6 rows and 5 columns. Now construct the frequency distribution table using the Sturge formula. So let us have step number 1. Find the range or R. The formula for range is equal to the highest score minus lowest score. The highest score is 48 and the lowest score is 13. We subtract, the answer is 35. Now for step number 2, determine the number of classes or row. We use a storage formula that is k is equal to 1 plus 3.322 times logarithm of n. Since n is equal to 30, let us substitute that is equal to 1 plus 3.322 times logarithm of 30. And that is equal to? 5.91 or approximately 6. Note, if the computed value is decimal, round up or take the next integer so all data observations are included, especially the extreme value. Now let us proceed to step number 3, determine the class interval. The formula that is i is equal to range divided by class size or r divided by k. Since r is equal to 35 and k is equal to 6, let's substitute the formula that is 35 divided by 6. And that is 5.83. Round up, that is approximately 6. Now let us proceed to step number 4. Construct the frequency distribution table. Since we solve the class size or k is equal to 6, it signifies the number of rows. To complete the table, first get the lowest value that is 13. Then each row, you need to add the interval. The class interval is 6. So 13 plus 6, the number is 19. 19 plus 6, the next number is 25. 25 plus 6, the next number is 31. 31 plus 6, that is 37. Then 37 plus 6, the last number is 43. Now, let us complete the upper values. First, at the bottom, observe the second row. What is the number? Yes, that is 19. So before 19, that is 18. Or solve it using the formula lower value plus i minus 1. So 13 plus 6 minus 1, that is also equal to 18. For the next row, you can use also the formula or just add the interval. The interval is 6, so 18 plus 6, that is equal to 24. 24 plus 6, that is 30. 30 plus 6, the next number is 36. Plus 6, that is 42 plus 6 that is 48 please remember that the highest value must be included at the upper class like 48 it is included to 43 to 48 now let us have the tally so cross out 23 then count 1 to 19 to 24 next is 38 so 1 to 37 to 42 since it is included to 37 to 42 
Next is 28. It is included to 25 to 30. So, 1. 46. It is included to 43 to 48. 22. It is included to 19 to 24. 20. It is included to 19 to 24 also. 18. It is included to 13 to 18, of course. 34, it is included to 31 to 36. And 36, of course, it is included to 31 to 36. So next one is 35, which is included to 31 to 36, so add 1. 45, it is included to 43 to 48, so add 1 to upper class. 48, of course, it is included to 43 to 48. So, additional 1 again. 16, so add 1 to 13 to 18. 22, so we add 1 to 19 to 24. 27, so we add 1 to 25 to 30. 25, additional 1 to class 25 to 30 again. Again, 29, so we add 1 again to 25 to 30. So we have 4 already for 25 to 30. 31, so we add 1 to 31 to 36. 30, so we add 1 to 25 to 30. So we have 5 to class 25 to 30. 25, so additional 1, so we already have 6 for class 25 to 30. Next, 44. It is included to 43 to 48. So, we have 4 already. Next is 21. 21 is under 20, 19 to 24. So, we already have 5. 18. So, it is included to 13 to 18. So, we have 3. 43. So, it is included to 43 to 48. So, we have 5. 21, so it is included to 19 to 24. So we have already 6. 26, again it is included to 25 to 30. So add 1, we have 7. 37, so add to 37 to 42. So we have 3. 29, add 1 to 25 to 30. So we already have 8. For that class, 13, so it is included to 13 to 18, so we have 4. And the last number is 37, it is included to 37 to 42. So now, we can have the frequency for the first class. We have 5, five respondents. For the next one, we have 4. The next one, we have 3. The next one, we have 8. The next one, we have 6. And the last class, we have 4. If we add the frequency, we come up to the total number of participants or respondents. We have n is equal to 30. Now, let us construct table that we usually use for solving measures of central tendency. Those are mean, median mode, and solving measures of position. Those are quartiles, deciles, and percentiles, which is for group data. Again, let us use the previous example, the final test in math of 30 students. But in this time, we have to add the columns, class mark, frequency times class mark or fx, the lower class boundary, and the less than cumulative frequency. Okay, first complete the column of class mark or we call it midpoint. When we say midpoint, we add the classes and divide it by 2. So 13 plus 18 divided by 2, that is 15.5. We start at the bottom. Take note. So the next row 19 plus 24 divided by 2, that is 
or simply add 6, 15.5 plus 6, that is 21.5. Where did we get 6? That is the class interval. So next row, just add 6, so that is 27.5. Next row, that is 33.5. Add 6 again, so that is 39.5. Add again the class interval of 6, that is 45.5. Now, complete the second column or the next column, frequency times class mark or fx. First, 5 times 45.5, that is equal to 227.5. Next, 4 times 39.5, that is equal to 158. Next is 3 times 33.5, that is equal to 100.5. Next, 8 times 27.5, that is equal to 220. Next is 6 times 21.5, that is, yes, 129. Last one, 4 times 15.5, so that is equal to 62. Okay, add the frequency or add the fx column that is equal to 897 and then next let us complete the lower class boundary so lower class boundary usually use in solving median mode and less uh, the measures of position how to get the lower class boundary? Just subtract the lower value by 0 0.5. So first, 43 minus 0 0.5, that is equal to 42.5. Next, 37 minus 0 0.5, that is equal to 36.5. Next, 31 minus 0 0.5, that is equal to 30.5. Next, 25 minus 0 0.5, that is equal to 24.5. Next, 19 minus 0.5, that is 18.5. Next, 13 minus 0.5, that is equal to 12.5. Okay, next, let's get the less than cumulative frequency. First, copy the number at the bottom of the first frequency, that is 4. And then, get the sum of the frequency in each row. So, 4 plus 6, that is equal to... 10. Then add the next frequency that is 8. 10 plus 8 that is equal to 18. The next add the next frequency that is 3. 18 plus 3 is 21. Then again add the next frequency that is 4. So 21 plus 4 that is equal to 25. And add the last frequency that is equal to 25 plus, plus 5 that is equal to 30. Take note, the last number must be equal to n, which is equal to 30. I hope you learned from my video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.